In this problem, we have a block sitting on an inclined plane, and it's held at rest by a cord attached to a wall. The first part of the problem asks us to describe the forces at play here, in particular the tension and the normal force. So let's do it. The first thing we want to do is identify the forces acting on the block. So of course, there's a tension force pointing along the direction of the cord. There's also a normal force acting on the block from the surface. Now the normal force always acts perpendicularly to the surface exerting the force. So I'm going to draw it in this direction, away from the, from the wedge like this. And lastly, there's also a gravitational force acting on the block, which points directly downwards. However, since we are looking at the block sitting on an inclined plane, I'm going to use a tilted coordinate system, since that's what you generally want to use in cases of problems like this, since it makes things much easier, which means we will have to break the gravity up into components. So if the downwards force on the block is mg, then the component of gravity along our newly defined y-axis, and you can use trigonometry to find this, I've got a video on the subject you could look at as well, is mg times the cosine of theta. And likewise, the component of it along the axis, along the x-axis, along the direction of the plane, is mg times the sine of theta. Now let's try solving for the forces. We're going to want to use Newton's second law for this, which states that the net force on an object is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. In this case, however, it's going to be zero because the block is at rest, held in place by the cord. So because we have different forces here acting in the x direction and acting in the y direction, let's break this up into, into axes. So let's just look at the forces acting on the x-axis, in the x-direction. Along the positive x-axis, we have T, the force due to tension. And then in the opposite direction, in the negative direction, we have mg times the sine of theta, the x-component of our force of gravity. And since there's no acceleration in that direction, it's just going to be equal to zero. But if you look at this, we can solve for T. The problem asks us to solve for the tension in the cord, T, and we can find this by algebraically saying that T, the tension, is equal to mg times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle of the wedge. And the problem gives us theta as 30 degrees, the problem gives us m, the mass of the block, as 9 kilograms, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we plug this into our calculator, then we find a tension force of about 44 newtons. So that is the answer to the part of the problem that asks about the tension. Now let's keep going and doing what we were doing earlier and do this in the y direction now. So in the, in the y direction, we have in the upwards positive y direction, the normal force. And then in the opposite direction, it's the other component for gravity, mg times the cosine of theta. And because there's no acceleration in the y-axis, this is just equal to zero. But now we can use the same logic that we use for the tension on this, because we still have the same components. We have m, we have g, we have theta. So now we just want to solve for the normal force. And we can solve that as mg times the cosine of theta. This is very simple algebra here. You just take the formula and add both sides of the equation, mg cosine theta. And once again, if we put this in our calculator, only difference is we're using the cosine of theta instead of the sine theta, then we find that the normal force has a magnitude of 76 newtons. So those are the magnitudes of the tension and the normal force acting on the block. Now the final part of the problem uh, asks us to imagine that the cord disappears which means that the block will no longer have the tension force restricting it, and it'll be free to slide down the block. We want to find the acceleration that the block will experience in that case. Well, I'm going to look at the x direction here, since our, the x-axis is the direction along which the mass will be sliding. Even if the cord's not there, it's still not going to accelerate along our y-axis, because that would mean that the block's like jumping into the air or, or burrowing into the wedge, which wouldn't make sense. If it's sliding down, it's only accelerating in the x-axis. 
So I'm going to take the formula we found earlier for the forces in the x direction. Only now it's no longer equal to zero because there is still some acceleration. Now, as per Newton's second law, it's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration the block experiences. We can also cross out t because without the chord, there is no tension. So the equation is just minus mg sine theta equals ma. The mass of the block is in both sides of the equation, so they cancel out. And we're now left with a formula saying that the acceleration the block experiences is equal to negative g times the sine of theta. So the acceleration that the block experiences is, has nothing to do with mass and is only a function of g, the gravity, and the angle of incline, theta. So we just plug in 9.8 meters per second squared for g, and then theta in for the angle, and we find an acceleration of negative 4.9 meters per second squared. So this is our acceleration for the block. Now if the problem was asking for the magnitude of acceleration, then we can ignore the minus sign and just give this part of the answer right here. But the negative sign is still relevant because it tells us that our answer makes sense. If the chord's not there, the block will slide down the slope towards the left here, which means that it'll be moving in the negative direction of the axis. So the fact that the negative sign is there makes sense because it tells us that the block is sliding down the wedge. So our answers make sense and we have answered the problem. That's all for this video. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll try to explain anything or answer any questions that are on things that might be unclear. But if you have a request for a future video you'd like me to make, then I have a Discord server linked in the description below. All are welcome and you can uh, post questions or problems or, or ideas for things you'd like to see videos on in the future. But that's all for now. So I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye-bye.